Welcome back. Welcome back. Well, President Obama made it clear that one of his priorities, in addition to the Middle East that we've just been talking about, in foreign policy will be, as he said in his inauguration speech, to forge a hard-earned peace in Afghanistan. Uh, we heard earlier we were talking about George Mitchell as envoy to the Middle East, and now we heard last night, in fact, that President Obama has appointed former U.S. Uh, U.N. Ambassador Richard Holbrooke as a special advisor on Afghanistan and Pakistan. And I'm joined now from Islamabad by the Pakistan Foreign Minister, Shah Mahmood Qureshi. Mr. Qureshi, welcome to the program. It's good to have you with us. Thank you. What, what difference uh, do you think it will make to Pakistan the fact that the president is now President Obama and not President Bush? Uh, one, one factor is, we've just heard the point about Richard Holbrook, but in what way will it make life different for you, do you think? Well, it's a new approach. Uh, this administration is looking at uh, Afghanistan from a different prism. Uh, they're talking of a more comprehensive approach. They are talking of a regional approach. They are talking of, uh, uh, you know, not just the military solution. With the military surge, they are recognizing the importance of civilian surge, economic development, uh, political engagement, and that makes a big difference. And so that, that takes the whole problem, you mean? It, it tries to find a solution that would be lasting, rather than just a narrow military solution? Absolutely. And you would hope, presumably, that the, uh, the bombing raids that uh, the United States did on border areas of Pakistan will cease, you would hope, would you? Well, see, uh, we have a point of view, and our point of view is that they have been counterproductive. They have alienated the people because of the collateral damage that comes with uh, those uh, uh, sort of raids and attacks. And we are trying to give ownership to this entire fight against extremism and terrorism. And we have also now analyzed and seen the accuracy and the results are questionable. So I think there is a need to sit and review this strategy. And in addition to reviewing that strategy and the different way of approaching the problem of Afghanistan, are there any other uh, changes, ad amendments to uh, American policy in your region that you would hope that uh, President Obama might embrace? Well, uh, one positive development that has taken place since this de democratic government has come into office, and that is the new environment between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Our relations have improved considerably. There's more trust, there's more confidence, there's more political engagement. We've signed a new forward-looking joint declaration with Afghanistan. And that shows that the governments in Pakistan and Afghanistan are no longer accusing each other, are no longer hostile to each other, and are willing to cooperate and do agree that we have a common objective and we need a common strategy to deal with that. And do you think as well that the U.S. that U.S. help, U.S. intervention in Kashmir could be helpful? Well, that was a very interesting connection that was drawn uh, by the uh, Obama administration. And the fact that they have now appointed uh, Mr. Holbrook as a special envoy shows that they are interested in uh, a more, uh, uh, in deepening the cooperation uh, in uh, this region, and their approach is regional. Now, as uh, talked about by many think tanks, that uh, the jihadi element, there is a link to Kashmir and resolution of that issue, which is an outstanding uh, dispute recognized by India and Pakistan, would certainly help uh, ease the situation because Pakistan really wants a, 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 a peaceful region and we want a resolution of all outstanding issues uh, with India. This government has uh, been approaching India with a very constructive uh, uh, approach. We want to normalize. We want to uh, open up trade. 
We want to increase uh, people-to-people contact, and we want a friendly, neighborly relationship. And in terms of the relationship with India, obviously, Mumbai didn't help, obviously. As you say, the, the uh, president of uh, Pakistan has uh, put forward some uh, very positive uh, statements towards, towards India and so on. Presumably, the outcome of the situation on Mumbai, you expect, will be that they were, many of them were Pakistani-based militants, but that there was no no government involvement in the attacks in any way. That would be the summary of the situation on Mumbai, would it? You see, it's now being recognized by uh, not just India, by other international players, that the government of Pakistan, the state of Pakistan, and any institution of Pakistan was not involved. Now, we are not ruling out non-state actors. Now, if there are non-state actors, then we are willing to cooperate with India to uh, uh, sort of bring the culprits to justice. We have initiated a, a, an inquiry, and uh, we will want to prosecute these people in a fair, transparent trial. And so that, that is a, you're volunteering to do that. And that would be a very important resolution in terms of relations between India and Pakistan, wouldn't it? Mumbai and Kashmir, the two I we've think, been talking about. I think so, because you see, I was in Delhi on the 26th when this unfortunate incident took place. And the meetings that I had with my counterpart were very productive. They were very engaging, uh, very constructive. So if you take the Mumbai incident out, we were moving at a very good pace towards normalization. Uh, unfortunately, the Mumbai incident has uh, stalled uh, the process, which we want uh, started as soon as possible. So is there anything else at the moment that would speed it along? Anything else that the United States could do in that area as well? There is a new democratic government in Pakistan, stability of this government, strengthening of civilian institutions in Pakistan. Uh, we believe that the new democratic setup in uh, uh, the US, in Washington, will strengthen democracy and democratic institutions in Pakistan, and will also recognize the economic challenges that this government is facing. There is a huge cost that Pakistan has paid in human terms, in economic and financial terms. Unfortunately, enough uh, attention has not been paid to it in the past, and we expect that this government, and this government has, uh, uh, in its initial contacts with us, uh, expressed their desire to triple the economic assistance uh, to Pakistan. And as uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has said, that they want to pursue a robust, uh, uh, robust diplomacy, and they want to use economic development as an essential tool to forward foreign policy relations and foreign policy objectives. I think that is a right approach, and we will welcome that. And indeed, tripling uh, the financial aid and assistance and so on would be a really important step forward for Pakistan. Indeed. Well, we thank you very, very much indeed for being with us, uh, Foreign Minister. It's been a, a joy to talk to you, and we look forward to welcoming you to the studio here when you're next, next in London. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. I'll be joined by best-selling South African-born author Gillian Slovo in a minute after the news headlines.